In this video, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting the differences between the new Dyson V15 Detect Absolute, the V11 Absolute, the V10, and maybe even the V8 as well, which came out five years ago, but is probably one of the most best-selling cordless Dysons of all time. So this is Dyson's new V15 Detect. I know it looks like the V11 over there, which is the previous version, but it's actually a lot more advanced internally. So starting off with the main handheld units, I'm going to be doing a suction test between the V15 and the V11. This is a Vax Turbo brush. The speed at which it spins is based on how powerful the suction is on your vacuum cleaner. So we're going to be testing the suction on the V11 first, on boost mode, which is a high setting, then the V11, then the V10, and then the V8. So each Dyson will be run on boost mode, which is their high setting, for a few seconds to see how fast the turbo brush spins, to give you an idea of how powerful the suction is. So we're going to be putting the V15 first on boost mode, then the V10, then V11, then the V8. The V15 has the most powerful motor at 230 air watts compared to the V11 which produces 185 air watts, both of which were on boost mode. What do air watts mean? It's too confusing, like I don't get it. So air wattage is, is the vacuum cleaner equivalent of horsepower. So the more suction you have, the more air watts there is. So on boost mode, which is the highest power, the V15 produces 230 air watts, V11 185. V10 on its highest setting, 151 air watts. V8 on max mode, 115 air watts. So this is the most powerful, then working your way down to the most least powerful and the oldest model. Now the V10 onwards, so the V10, V11 and V15, they have three suction settings, whereas the V8 only has two, high and low power, like a Henry vacuum. So on the middle setting, which is the auto mode, the V11, I mean, sorry, V15 produces 47 air watts. V11, 45 air watts. V10 on mode 2, or the middle setting, 33 air watts. And the V8 on low, 22 air watts. And on the lowest setting, the V15 produces 27 air watts, which is basically like a V6 on low. 23 air watts with the V11. 16 air watts with the V10, yep, 16. And on the lowest setting, you got 22 with the V8. Although, don't be put off with the V10 because you might think, oh, the V8 is better on low power. Actually, using the V10 on mode 2 with the 33 air watts of power, you still get more runtime or just as good as a runtime with the V8 on low. So you're better off with the V8. V10! V10. So let me quickly show you the runtime, yeah? On the V15 on eco mode, you've got this much runtime with the cleaner head attached. So 71 minutes on low power 20 minutes or 21 minutes on medium or auto and on boost you've got basically 11 and a half minutes now let's compare that to the V11 eco mode gives you 50 well 51 minutes Yeah, that's that. Results may vary because this Dyson is now 7 months old and I have used it on boost mode quite a few times on several occasions and the heat does burn out the battery and it's not good for it so it might be on its original runtime or it might have degraded, I don't know. The sun is actually showing the dust up really well on this isn't it? So on high power you get 6 minutes with the V10 and V8 but on low power you get about 25 minutes with the V8 and with the V10 it's about well, you get at least half an hour on mode 2, and on low power, I'm sure you can do the vacuum in for about between maybe 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm not too sure exactly how much there is on the V10, but it's a lot better than the V8 battery. The new V15 has a sensor, which basically has the ability to count how many particles are being vacuumed up. And also, it tells you the statistics scientifically on the screen at the back. You might think, oh, that's just marketing, it's a load of rubbish, that's just a gimmick, what's that going to do? But what it actually does is it also boosts the motor power or the suction power 
depending on how dirty your carpet is. So when it detects dust, it will literally increase the suction power. Allow me to demonstrate. So there's a small amount of dirt on the carpet here. Let's see if it detects it. So it works on auto mode for this kind of feature. So when you go over the area of carpet that's dirty, it boosts the power. Also what you can do is adjust the sensitivity of the motor, so basically what it is right. On default you got it on medium yeah, and if you want it to be extra sensitive to let you know where your carpets are dirty, you can put it on high, if you want to put it on high you can, or if it's too annoying you can put it on low. I'm pretty sure you can, actually no you can't turn it off, but it's a feature that it's designed to do. So yeah, I've got mine on medium, because on high, <laughs> I literally run out of power trying to vacuum my entire downstairs, trying to get all the extra fine dust, you know what I mean? Because the carpet will never be 100% clean, so yeah, but this is a really, really clever vacuum. The V11 hasn't got this feature. In fact, apart from the more powerful motor in the V15 and the particle sensor, the V11 and the V15 are almost identical from the handheld unit itself. The V15 does have slight improvements over the V11 with just little things like a slightly more improved cycle on setup and this part here is actually curved now compared to that being flat on the V11 so it's more friendly with your thumb. And also the main thing is that I've noticed yeah, oh nah, I spilled dust on my V11. Yeah so basically on the V15 the shroud is now actually flexible so the benefit of this here is that it absorbs shock. See how it bends like that? The V11 doesn't do that. And the V10 and V8, they have solid metal, yeah, which will basically dent. Because a lot of people, right, when they're emptying the Dysons, and they see a lot of dust coming out in the fine dust collection chamber, which is designed to capture dust because of the cyclones, that's how they work, yeah, they want to get all the dust out. And so they bang it against the bin, and then as a result, the shroud gets dented. So this is a lot more bulletproof compared to the V11, V10, and V8, and the V7 as well. And also, if we take a look at the shroud holes, on the V11 here, they're quite big, substantially big actually, compared to the ones on the V15. So this will help with the V15 to not let hair get past here, although you never know, hair might get past these new smaller holes, but it will be a lot less than on the V11, because on my V11, there has been hair and cat hair and that on the filter, so... So far on the V15, I've seen one cat hair, but it is less than the V11, because the V11 would have quite a few hairs on it. So the V15 and the V11 have got the screen at the back here, which tells you exactly, precisely how much runtime you got left, so you know exactly how much time you got left to vacuum. On the V8 and the V10, you haven't got a screen at the back, you've got plastic. So the V8 and the V10 basically have three battery lights here. <laughs> So imagine you're halfway through vacuuming your living room, yeah, and you've got the kitchen to do as well. You go from vacuuming calmly, yeah, in jungle cool this Dyson, then all of a sudden, one light left. How much time have I got? So you go, ah! Yeah, and then you're panting and hyperventilating and that just because your battery's running out. And imagine it does run out and you miss a bit because you're vacuuming too fast. You don't want to be doing that, yeah. I'm actually out of breath, you know, I can't lie. The V8 has two filters to wash. One at the top here, which is a pre bottle filter, and then you got to wash the one at the back as well, which is a HEPA filter. With the V10, V11 and V15, there's only one single filter to wash, and that's the one at the back. So that's the 2-in-1 pre and post motor filter. Now because V11 and V15 have a screen, yeah, they have a cutout for the back of the filter. So that is fully hollow, yeah, you can see my mouth. So you can easily access the HEPA and agitate with your finger. With the V10, you don't have that. With the V10, you can't really do that because there's a plastic area at the back. So you can't really reach in there properly. So you have to fill it with the water, keep shaking it and keep banging it out. So it's not as easy to wash as this one. 
on the V15 and the V11. On the back of the battery you've got a black rubber piece which basically helps for gripping the vacuum against the wall so it doesn't slide around, yeah? Because on the V8 it doesn't have that, so it just slides against the wall and it can fall over. With the V10, not so much, it just stays there. While it's not perfect, you know, it's all better than having no rubber grip. So yeah, so we've covered the handheld units themselves, right? Onto the ones now, they're all pretty much the same. It's a wand, it's a stick, whatever. Except the V8 wand is slightly longer because of its design. You don't need a longer wand on the V10 kind of style shaped Dysons because the bin is more elongated and the V8 hasn't got that design so it needs a longer wand. But other than that they're the same. Except one more thing. On the V11 and V8 and all of that, all the quarters Dysons previously had a sticker for the branding or the name. I don't like that because often you carry the vacuum from here and that would put wear on the edge of the sticker and eventually it would just peel off so that's not nice on the v15 however they've actually printed it on so that is a lot more premium than the previous models so i really like that but what are the differences between the cleaner heads you may ask well now this is the v10 cleaner head right it's just a basic Dyson cordless vacuum head with a 50 watt motor. It performs okay actually and it does a pretty good job, but it's the same as a V8 head. But with the redesigned um, rubber strip at the back and that's all it is. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as the V8 head. So that's that. This is the High Torque V11 head and you know all the V11s actually have this head apart from the Animal one which is that kind of head over there as featured on the UK V10s, I don't know why, because in the USA they had the high torque head. But anyway, that's how it is. This is a lot better than the V10 or previous version over there because it's got a 100 watt motor compared to 50 watts on the previous version. And so it vibrates the carpet a lot better and you can really hear the brush bar beating the carpet. And it's got more torque as well so it just makes it more powerful. So the red brushes on the V11 head are actually a lot better than the ones on the V10 because on the V10 they've got less bristles so it doesn't really perform as well as the high torque head. And also the high torque head has this red suction control at the front yeah so as you can see it's currently on the plus setting which allows you to have a deeper clean because it focuses all the suction into your carpet and if you put it on the medium setting or the middle setting it opens up the gate slightly so if I put it on plus and show you the difference. It opens it up a little bit halfway, so it allows for a bit more airflow. And if you open it fully, that's the best setting for hard floors. So it allows for larger debris to get sucked in, like cat biscuits or whatever. You'll literally get sucked in. So yeah, you have it on that setting for hard floors. And if you want to have your vacuum a lot easier to push on carpets, because in case it's hard to push on the plus setting and maybe even the middle setting as well. The V15 head is actually a lot better than the V11 head, despite looking quite similar. So first of all, it's got the anti-tangle design, yeah? It's got a comb. See that red comb over there at the back? So literally what it does, right, if I zoom in so you can see this better. So that's the comb in action, combing the hair off the brush bar. And it seems to do a pretty good job of it, because I haven't had any hair get stuck on it so far. So I just removed the brush bar out of the V11 head and on the V15 head we're going to be comparing the brush bars now because that's the other difference between the two heads. So the V15 one is on the bottom with the purple parts and the silver one at the top is the V11 one. So excuse the string wrapped around here yeah, but it just goes to show that it does get tangled and wrapped around with hair and that. Because they made the purple beaters a lot bigger than on the V11 design this actually serves two functions. So first of all, it vibrates the carpet a lot more because, you know when the brush spins yet yeah, and the carpet gets sucked up into the vacuum cleaner head and the brush bar spins, the purple beaters actually beat the carpet a lot more to loosen the embedded dirt and grit a lot more than the V11 head. Also, because they elongated the purple plastic beaters yet, yeah, the bristles actually look a lot shorter. But they're not actually shorter, they're just... I think they're the same brushes as the V11, but because of this, the bristles seem to have less room to flex, and therefore they seem stiffer, so it grooms the carpet a lot better than the V11 does. I'm not too sure if it's the brush bar, or if it's both the combination of the more powerful suction and the brush bar, 
But on my thick living room carpet, yeah, you know the dark grey one that I was showing you earlier in this video, um, I had to use a V11 on the boost suction setting with the head on plus to be able to groom my carpet properly, especially when I'm vacuuming really fast. But with the V11, I mean V15, sorry, it grooms the same carpet very well with the suction on auto mode and even with the gates on, like, you know, when they open, yeah. It still does the same thing, so this definitely works a lot better at carpet vacuuming than the V11 torque drive head. But on hard floors, they're the same. So the mini motorized heads, this is the one from the V8, V10 and V11. It's actually really good, you know. They were all the same on the V8 onwards for a good while because it was actually a really good tool. There's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion, at all, except you had to clean the hair off of it. You know, the brush, yeah? But the brush is actually removable really easily with a screwdriver. You just turn that, or with a coin even the end cap comes off and the whole brush bar slides out for cleaning so it's actually a really good tool it works really well the v15 one is redesigned with a cone shaped brush bar where the hair basically it does get wrapped around but eventually the tighter it gets here it falls off the end eventually and then it gets sucked up this channel and then up into the vacuum bin it's a clever design but i just don't like it here's why so the V11 has two rows of bristles and it actually grooms very very well. It's the best thing I've ever used on my stairs and it really does deep clean your carpet on the stairs because I've never used anything better. I've used all kinds of vacuums and their fancy tools on my stairs. You can really hear the power on this thing as well when you put the brush bar against leather for example. With this not so much, okay, it's not that powerful, there's, you know, there's gaps in between the bristles and the edge cleaning as well. If you take a look here, yeah, the V11 one has better edge cleaning than the V15 one. Because the bristles, or the brush bar, on the V15, it doesn't reach at either end. At least on the V11 one, it does reach to the edge pretty well compared to this one. Where there's a big fat gap. Let me just turn the brushes, yeah, so you can see the furdies you can get. So that's the furdies you can get, yeah, with brush agitation. You leave all this, it's like an inch where the brushes don't actually brush the carpet. You only get some suction here, but that's it, literally. And then you got all that as well. Which seems to be about the same size on the V11 as well. Because of this head, yeah, once you're done vacuuming the stairs, you're forced to get the crevice tool out, especially when there's bits or hair in the corner, it's not gonna get it. You have to get the crevice tool out, so that's a bit of an inconvenience. Although, if you think positive, yeah, that can be a good thing because the crevice tool will do really really well at cleaning the edges also I don't get why this end is narrower than this end because the sole plate opening I mean if you take a look at the old one yeah this is a good design very good design and they've made a riser visor it's not a riser visor it's like a pivoting kind of thing where it adjusts to the contours of your stairs really well but with this it kind of defeats the purpose because it's not going to do as good of a job so if I grab my video script over here, yep, I do write scripts for my videos when I'm talking and that. Let's say that's the very edge of your stairs, yeah? See that gap? All that suction is going to be leaking out of there. So you're not really going to get a proper deep clean compared to the one that this can provide. So you're going to have to angle the head a bit more. I mean, come on, that's not really cleverly thought out, is it? So, that's bang on straight, yeah? Imagine how much suction is going to leak out of this side compared to the other side. That's not right. I don't like that. As for the fluffy heads, they've also redesigned it for the V15. So this is the old version from the V6. Yeah, that's how long it's been going for. The, all they change here from the V6 is the connector. That's it. The whole design is pretty much the same thing, yeah? Exact same fluffy head. It's a big fat roller. I'm not going to lie, it's actually a pretty good head. But it's also... You know what it is, yeah? It's a bit too manoeuvrable, because if you move your... If you steer your wrist the slightest, it will literally do a sharp U-turn like that. That's just exaggeration, yeah, but it's proper, proper manoeuvrable. It's the most manoeuvrable thing I've seen in my entire life on any vacuum. This one's a lot better. It's not that manoeuvrable compared to this. It's more sensible, yeah. It's very, very more agile than the other vacuums you can get it still does sharp 90 degree turns very very well i prefer this actually and also it's a lot more low profile because it's thinner so it gets on the low furniture better and they included a laser so it actually highlights all the dust particles you're gonna 
see on your hard floor as long as the room's not brightly lit then yeah it will reveal everything it's a really good tool this it's better than the older one in every single way pretty much except the older one is better well by the way you can turn the laser off as well if you want to but the older one's better because it's got a roller at the back so if you've got any large debris being picked up from back ways with this one it might just push it around because it hasn't got that with this the roller turns as you move the head and it will guide it into the air path basically and also this is all carbon fiber yeah these black strips what you don't know or you might know is that i just had to find this for myself yeah i found it out for myself these aren't actually carbon fiber they are but two i think there's four of these black strips yeah two of them are actually black bristles they're not carbon fiber but the other two strips are actually carbon fiber so you get two bristles and two carbon fiber strips that's it and then the red and blue part are just fluffy areas so that's that just as a summary get the v8 if you are on a budget and you don't care as long as a Dyson's a Dyson to you. The V10 is basically a V8 but with slightly better runtime, slightly better suction and slightly bigger bin. That's all it offers over the V8. If you're looking for another reason to get the V10, I've got one for you. So this is the only cordless vacuum that sounds like the ray gun or the thunder gun in Call of Duty Black Ops. That's a V10. V11 is basically a V10 but with slightly better suction again, slightly better runtime again. The updated cleaner head with the high torque design and that red suction control at the front with the gates and also the screen at the back. So it tells you the real runtime, what mode you're on and if it's got the filter loose for example it will tell you that notification and if the suction's blocked for example it's blocked somewhere tells you that the airways are blocked and it plays a video showing you where to check for blockages and what to do so again that's a really really clever design for people who don't know how to use it or take it apart even it shows you where to check the v10 doesn't really have that benefit because it hasn't got a screen the v15 does though this is just the first one that does have that benefit and this is the animal one it doesn't have the screen this advanced so yeah that's that also, later V11s had a removable battery, so at the push of the button, the whole battery comes out, so you can swap it for another one. Except mine doesn't really, it didn't really come with two batteries, it just came with one. I think you have to buy them separately or something, but yeah, it's got a swappable battery feature now, so you can remove them, just as easy as that. Early V11s and V10s and V8s, all of that, they had three screws to remove the battery, so it's just a better design to have it removable. And the V15 is just a V11, but with the new sensor that detects dust, the better brush bar, the anti-tangle comb, and the anti-tangle cleaner head, and the new, the new fluffy head, and with a laser, and uh, the particle counter. That's all it is, really. Yep, that's that.